Welcome to Nebraska Farmcast, a production of the Center for Agricultural Profitability in the Department of Agricultural Economics at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. I'm Ryan Evans. In rural communities, it can often seem like the same people are involved in everything. Why does it seem there are no new faces when it comes to helping with community events, membership in community organizations, or filling elected positions? Cheryl burkhart Creasel, an Extension Specialist with Rural Prosperity Nebraska, has a new article on our Center for Ag Profitability site that discusses how communities can reach out to involve new people and to better ensure that no barriers exist for involvement. She joins me now. Hi, Cheryl. Hi. Hi, Ryan. So you've written that community members in uh, rural Nebraska are often very aware of the fact that the same group of people is often involved in organizing and participating in so much of what is happening in the community, an uh, uh, issue, no doubt, that's not just limited to uh, Nebraska here. So if this is true, why does it tend to happen? Well, uh, first off, it actually could be true to some degree. Um, So many of our communities have populations that are just a bit stagnant, and as people age or they move out of the community, there are less and less people to manage those same community roles. But I really suspect that that's not the only reason we see this happening. It may be because we just um, keep interacting with the same people in the community or seeing them, and we're really not reaching out to everyone. So from my perspective, maybe our tactics for getting people involved or engaged really haven't kept up with changing demographics and trends. And you describe the concept of visible and invisible individuals in communities, and you illustrate this by describing an iceberg. So can you explain more? Sure. Um, I I was introduced to a community developer in Australia, uh, Vivian Triford. And uh, she really came up with this idea, and it just really resonated with me. It made a lot of sense. So I thought I I would share it with others. So to really understand that logic, uh, you really need to think about an iceberg with some of that ice sitting above the sea level and some below, okay? So above the ice and clearly visible, these are the people we see all the time in our communities. These could be what we would call the activists, the vocal minority, Maybe sometimes the articulate irate, Uh, we could have interested retirees and community leaders. Now, I mean, that all sounds logical to me. I could see that in a lot of the community meetings that are held here in Nebraska. So, but just below the surface of the ice and generally invisible are often kind of unique groups of people. Those that can't see how they could help. Um, Sometimes they're, they're culturally diverse and new to the community. Maybe they didn't see or hear the invitation to participate. And sometimes these folks just don't trust that sponsoring organization. So uh, those are just right below the ice and and generally invisible. But further down that iceberg and in what I would call the dark water are two groups, according to Twyford, that are almost always invisible. And she would categorize categorize these as those that are either uh, indigenous or Native Americans and often it is the youth of the community. So particularly for those groups that uh, you just described as being maybe below the surface, farther down on the iceberg, what are some ways that these barriers can be broken down in communities so that more people feel like they can participate? Well, you know, in that, um, in that grouping, uh, there were a couple of, cu- um, of clues as, as far as I could see. It's, um, Maybe some people just didn't hear the invitation to participate. Um, maybe the way you promote or, or um, you know, showcase that meeting just don't reach everybody. Um, and so, uh, you know, maybe it's the time of day the meeting's held or maybe where it's held. Sometimes transportation can be an issue. And, and from last year, we all know how important child care is. So child care can be an issue, too. So sometimes we need to mix things up a little bit and make some, um, make some opportunities happen and think about how p- people participate and ways that we can maybe reach out just a little bit more. And so whose responsibility is that when it comes to involving uh, new faces in communities? Well, it's everybody's responsibility. So um, reaching out to new people and maybe even new groups in the community is really a simple gesture. 
And that can happen in a lot of different ways. You know, and, and for me, at the most basic level, just a personal invitation to participate in an event or an activity can mean a, a whole lot to somebody who may not know about the opportunity or maybe feel that they really aren't welcome to join in. But, you know, if each person reached out and brought just one new person to some kind of a community gathering, you know, that could really change everything. And why is what we're talking about so important out there to, to encourage more diversity in, uh, in new voices in community participation? Well, new people uh, generate new ideas and they have new perspectives and they also offer a lot of new energy to uh, what could be kind of repetitious or traditional actions or activities within the community. So that new life really is an important uh, important piece to um, keeping things fresh and interesting. You know, there's also something that's probably the most important, and that um, reaching out to everybody in the community really brings the community together, and it builds community, and it builds community capacity. And, and that, to me, is the most important aspect. Great. Well, that is Cheryl burkhart Creasel, an extension specialist with Rural Prosperity Nebraska, and you can find out more about their work at ruralprosperityne.unl.edu. And we've got a copy of her new article on what we've been talking about here today on our website for the Center for Ag Profitability at CAP, that's cap.unl.edu. Cheryl, thanks for your time. Thank you so much, Ryan. Nebraska Farmcast is a production of the Center for Agricultural Profitability at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. For the latest research-based information and education resources to manage your farm or ranch operation, visit our website at cap.unl.edu. That's cap.unl.edu.